Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started, hi everyone. So this is, uh, I guess it's the last of the sort of four or five meetings we put together on uh, R&D topics happening in the US uh, CMS and US Atlas operations program. So we have uh, two topics today. First is from Atlas and the second from CMS. So uh, Yana will tell us about uh, fast calorimeter simulation uh, in Atlas. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. So I'm Jana and I want to talk about the Atlas Fast Carometer Simulation or short the uh, Fast Carosim. And in this talk, uh, I want to focus mainly on, on what were my contributions to the project. So to start, here's a breakdown of the Monte Carlo chain and Atlas. So starting from the event generation, followed by the detector simulation, uh, digitization, and, and finally reconstruction. So this table uh, states average CPU times for each step for different processes, where it's clear that simulation takes up most of the time. And in this pie chart, this is a breakdown how much time is spent for the simulation of a TDBAR event in each detector part. And the blue part uh, shows that most of the time is spent in the in the carometer. So therefore, it's clear that the first priority for efficiently accelerating the uh, Monte Carlo chain is, is to replace the full simulation in the calorimeter by a fast simulation. And Atlas has a long tradition uh, using fast simulation. So we have a first version of fast calorism since about uh, 2010, and it's combined with Gion4 full simulation in the muon detector and in the inner detector. And this combined tool then is called AF2 or Atl Fast 2. So we've used AF2 for about half of our uh, simulation, and it's uh, it's it's been used in many physics papers. So it's a real challenge to improve over this already existing tool. And this plot here it shows that the Atlas plans for the high Lumi LHG strongly rely on fast simulation. So even in the baseline scenario, we would use it for 60% of the events, but that's not enough to stay in the budget. So in the most aggressive scenario, we would do 90% of the simulations with, with, with fast with fast colorism, and then um, would use fast simulation not only in the colorometer, but also in, in the inner detector and speed up other parts of the chain uh, as well. So that's the Atlas detector. Um, so it's it's the largest detector at the LHC and it's, its huge size is one of the reasons why our full simulation is so slow. So the color meter is here at the center and this is a zoom so this is a very sophisticated piece of technology. It uses different materials and different geometries. So these golden parts, this is a sampling calorimeter based on liquid argon as, as active material, and it has to be cooled in a cryostat. And then around this, these gray parts, they don't need to be cooled. Those are hydronic calorimeters based on steel and, and scintillating uh, materials. So in total, we have about 190,000 cells um, and uh, these are arranged in so-called samplings or, or, or simply layers, and we have 24 of them. So the idea of fast colorism is to derive the energy response from single particles that are simulated with Gion4 in a fine grid of eta and energy, and then also to separate this response into longitudinal and lateral components. So this uh, plot tries to visualize the eta and energy grid, so we have 100 equidistant bins in eta covering zero to five and 17 discrete points in momentum. They range from 64 MeV up to uh, about four TeV. And those are equally spaced on a log scale. So this makes 1,700 parameterization slices. And then we do that for three particles. So uh, photons, electrons, and, and charged pions. So this gives a total of 5,100 parameterizations. So the events are generated with the particle gun and they create the particles directly at the calorimeter surface, so not in the center of the detector. And then we use some specific uh, settings for the simulation in DigiRigo. So for example, we don't add noise uh, in order not to double count in the end. So the first component uh, of this new fast colorism is the uh, longitudinal energy parameterization. So this one describes the energy that is deposited along the shower axis in the various color layers that are hit by the particle's trajectory. And the main difficulty here is that the, the, the fact that these deposits are strongly correlated with each other. So that's not easy to deal with. 
so to simplify this, we use the principal component analysis, a PCA, to decorrelate the layers. So starting from the energy fractions and the total energy, these distributions undergo a set of transformations, the cumulatives, and then the Gaussians. And then they are fed into this uh, T principle method that comes with root. And this one outputs a set of uh, N largely uncorrelated distributions. This is how they look. So we call those the principal components and they are formal to each other. And then the, the first one carries the most information or it has the largest uh, variance. And so we use the, the leading and sometimes also the subleading components to divide the, the GN4 input data set into quantiles. Uh, we also call these PCA bins. So typically there are five bins and this plot shows uh, the bin borders for one specific parametrization slice. And then showers that end up in the same bin, they typically have similar features. So for example, all the earliest shower showers would go into the first bin. And then this is getting a bit more complicated. So after we've constructed these, these PCA bins, um, we run this PCA chain again, so a second time, but this time separately for events in each bin. So this way an even better decorrelation is achieved. So this is basically how the parameterization is done. And then in the simulation step, um, this, this chain, this PCA chain is performed backwards, starting from random number, we, we get back to the, uh, to the inputs. So this slide uh, shows how well this decorrelation works. Um, so this is for 65 GV photons at eta 0.2. And the first row shows 2D distributions of energy in layer one versus the preassembler or layer two versus the preassembler or layer two versus layer one. And you see how strongly correlated this is. And then in the second row, these are this, uh, the distributions after they were trans, uh, transformed with the PCA. And now you see that the correlation coefficients that are given in the plots, they are consistent with, with zero. So this works. And then we can go ahead and, and, and validate uh, how well can we simulate the energies. So um, the, the, what, what we do here is a, is a toy simulation. So that this performs the PCA chain that I just mentioned backwards. So it's not a full validation. It doesn't, con uh, doesn't include uh, reconstruction. But we can uh, compare now the energy fractions in each, uh, in each uh, layer and the and the total energy and and we see that for this specific example here so this is one TV pions at eta 0.2 we can uh, very decently model all the all the energies and uh, five PCA bins uh, that are used here this is sufficient for most of the parameterization slices okay so now I want to briefly speak about the lateral uh, energy parameterization or or we also call it the shape parameterization. And so this is not this was not my work, but it's really crucial to understand fast colorism. So here uh, the the hit energies that are deposited by Chion for around the shower axis are uh, they are stored in 2D histograms like the one uh, shown here. So this is an average over all showers in a given PCA bin and parameterization slice. So and the binning is finer than the cell sizes and we notice that this is important um we get better agreement if we if we use you know a voxelization that is finer than the cells this is actually the reason why we start from hit energies and not from cells um because it works better so we store about 100,000 of these histograms and then in the simulation uh, each histogram is treated like a 2d pdf so we randomly sample hit positions and then we take you know, the energy that comes from the longitudinal component is distributed to these uh, to these hits, and we also noted that the number of hits is is an important parameter because with this uh, we can influence the fluctuations uh, in each simulated shower. <clears throat> um, so. These methods basically, it's, it's a little bit simplified, but this is basically the backbone of fast colorism. And with those in place, we can now simulate uh, particles and whole events. And this is one of the earliest uh, uh, event displays that we made. This is Higgs to gamma gamma. 
And um, so what we see here is, uh, is a Higgs decay to two photons that are back to back. One is converted and the other one is, is unconverted. And, and Higgs to gamma gamma was a, a benchmark that we've used in this, in this project from the, from the beginning. And I will have, I will have a few more plots uh, later on. <clears throat> so um, in, these, in the next slides, I, I want to talk about a couple of improvements for the energy parameterization that I worked on in the, in the last year or, or, or two. So uh, we found that the toy simulations uh, that, that, I, that, that I basically looked at for every parameterization slice, so those revealed that there were a couple of really bad mismodelings for some specific iter slices, namely at, at 0, 2.5 and 3.2. So this is exactly where the detector significantly changes. And it, this resulted in a spurious uh, third peak in the, in the toy simulation where there are no entries in, in Xi'an 4. So to fix that, I had a, a close look at the distributions of the principal components. And I noticed uh, some features that are not uh, compatible with Gaussian shapes. Um, so if everything works as expected, those would be perfect Gaussians. Right? But for example, here in the subleading PC, in this example, we see this uh, is, is such a double peak uh, structure. So to deal with these cases, I developed an algorithm that would try many different PCA binning configurations, and then it would run the toy simulation and assess the agreement after the full chain, and then it would select the best PCA binning. So in this case, um, 130 GV photons at eta 3.2, the best binning is inclusive in the leading and eight bins in the subleading component. And when, when we use this PCA binning weight, you see that the modelings are completely gone and it, it looks just perfect. And about 60 parameterization slices have been improved uh, with, this, with this method. <clears throat> And then the next problem was that for pretty much every uh, parameterization slice, it turned out that the simulated total energy resolution is a bit larger than the one expected from Gion 4. Um, so this was not a big effect, but it was consistently present in all the slices. So to fix this problem, uh, we came up with what we call a probabilistic reweighting method. So for that, I constructed a, a, a probability histogram uh, one example is shown up here. So this is basically the ratio of the toy simulated uncorrected energy over the expected Gion 4 energy. And then we use this histogram for a hit and miss algorithm during the actual simulation. So for each simulated energy, we throw a random number. And if this, if that number is smaller than the probability value from the histogram that is stored, then we would reject the simulation and repeat it. Right? and we go on until it's accepted. And this is how we can force the simulated energy line shape to match the one of Gion 4. And this really works. So this is one example. Um, so gray is, is Gion 4 and blue is the toy simulation uh, without this reweighting. And you see it doesn't fully match. And then with this reweighting, we can get this, in red, we can get this into almost the perfect agreement. And this shows the core, but similar things also happen in the tail of the distribution. <clears throat> and then, so the, the, the last correction, and this one is, is brand new. So this is a correction of the energy response on the phi impact position of the particle in the cell. And so it turns out that this is a real uh, uh, significant oscillation structure, which is, is shown here, um, that, that Qian4 uh, uh, produces because it, it knows the the exact geometry of our um, accordion-shaped cells in the EM Carlo. So they have this accordion structure to avoid uh, cracks in the phi symmetry. And then there's a complicated interplay with the energy calibration. Uh, so that one is tailored for Gen 4. And this the calibration would try to compensate for that oscillation um, and, and would basically produce a flattening for Gen 4. But since in fast Carlosim, which uses the simplified geometry, which, um, which, uh, which uh, simplifies cells as cuboids, this one does not model this oscillation. So then it would create a widening of the resolution after calibration. 
so what we now do to fix this is we remove this energy dependence on on this fiber variable in the input samples uh, from Qian4 that are used to derive the parameterization. So that will reduce the resolution a bit, and and um, that's shown here. This is for one slice where the effect is really large. Typically, it's small, but here we we show one where it's really large. So gray is before this. Um, so gray is Qian4 as is, and black. Is, is after we uh, we divide by this by this function and you see it gets it gets uh, uh, more narrow and then we can again force the fast color simulation with this probabilistic prevailing that I just mentioned we can force this to follow the corrected Gion4 distribution and I will show in a minute that this gives better agreement after uh, after calibration. So now I want to introduce um, uh, AF3. So this is the new fast simulation tool um, following AF2. Um, so this is comprised of several components. Um, so we use the new fast color sim for electrons and photons and also for low and high energetic electrons. And then we have fast color GAN. Um, um, we use this for medium energetic electrons. And I have a few slides on this in the backup. I'm not going into details because I didn't work on that. And we also use Qian4 for the very soft hadrons. Yeah, and 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 for all the in the colorimeter, and then for all the particles in the muon system and the inner detector, and then what's new is also a muon punch through simulation um, that is applied uh, for hadrons. And again, I have some details in the backup. So we have assessed the speed of this new tool. Um, this was estimated a, a few years ago from previous versions, but the picture is not changing a lot. So we have, um, if you look at TD bi events, we have a speed of, of about a factor 8 to 10, right? So full G4 takes 230 seconds, um, and our fast simulation takes about 25 seconds. But this number is totally dominated by G on 4 um, from the inner detector. The actual fast simulation, and it doesn't matter if it's fast calorism or fast calorogan, it's extremely fast. So this is negligible compared to the remaining uh, time spent in GN4. So this is a nice speeder, but then for GN4, uh, sorry, for run 4, we would uh, then also have to um, uh, substitute the, 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 the tracking by, by, with a fast tracking uh, algorithm to, to speed this up even further. Okay, so now I want to show a few brand new validation plots. Um, so, so they were approved, uh, these plots were approved only yesterday. So this is now after the full event chain has been run, this includes reconstruction. And this plot shows a free, which is the fraction of energy deposited in the third color layer. So here at the back of, of, of the colorimeter. And you see that um, AF2, so the previous tool, really had problems simulating this uh, or modeling this variable. But our new tool, AF3, either the version from last year or the version from this year, um, it, it, can get this, uh, it can get this spot on with, with GN4. OK, and then a few more plots. So here on the left, I'm showing the uh, reconstructed Higgs to die photon, on, Higgs to die photon mass peak. Uh, and fully inclusively, and, and on the right, this is the energy response for high energetic photons um, in, the, in the barrel. And uh, again, the colors are the same as before, um, and you can see by eye or, or just from the numbers that are plotted in the uh, stated in the plot that the, the AF3, the latest version of AF3 that we're going to release now, um, gives the best agreement with, with GN4. And it's nice to see here for the energy response that, that the red, which Contain, which includes this resolution correction I was talking about. You see how, how much this improves um, uh, and, and how much better we do now with uh, respect to GN4. And it's important to know that there is a huge uh, impact here from the calibration. So each of these samples is calibrated um, with a BDT-based calibration that was trained on the respective, with the respective simulation, except for the red, except for the latest A3 version, this one uses a calibration trained with the previous A3 version. So we can expect that after this has been updated, um, we could expect to get even a little bit better still. Okay, so that's my uh, that's my final slide. So A3 is about to be released, and it will be used. Uh, uh, for re-simulating all our existing fast simulation samples. And so this is uh, roughly a number of 7 billion events, so it's quite a number. 
And we have, uh, we have submitted a VChat paper. Um, we also plan to write a longer computing paper. And the work will continue for run free. There's a second release planned with, with you know, with improvements for both Fascalism and, and Fascal Organa. A few things I, I note here, but this is very specific. So um, I really um, want to thank uh, US Computing uh, for the support. And I'm going to end here. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. That's very interesting. Um, first questions. Uh, Kevin. Yes, thanks. Uh, it's very interesting to hear uh, about these improvements in the Atlas Fast simulation. Um, I have two questions uh, about the, the, the V3 in particular. Um, so if you go back to, I think, the slide where you defined it before the, the latest plots, I don't remember which slide it was. Yeah, this one. Um, how were these How is it determined how it's split up between the different components? Um, like the, the, the fact that there's this particular range of hadrons where the, the GAN is used. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I have a few slides in the backup. Um, we have been looking at different, uh, at different plots. Um, so first we start with, uh, with clusters from single pi ensembles. So we look at, uh, cluster multiplicity, cluster moments, and then we also go to chats. And then we look at, for example, chat mass, um, con number of constituents in the chat, and chat substructure variables. So we look at a, a full range of, of plots and then make an, an informed decision. But I have to tell you, the differences for different energy thresholds, they are not very large. So um, it's not a super clear cut that we can make but we our feeling was that that you know the split up that we have now gives the gives the best possible result okay thanks uh, the other question i had was simpler um uh, in the validation plots you showed uh, i think the, the second set of plots um yeah just want this slide to take here uh what changed between the candidate and the release to improve the uh the energy resolution, or the, I guess it's the energy response there. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so the one relevant relevant thing that changed was the introduction of this uh, on page fifteen. So this correction for the of the energy uh, response depending on this phi variable. So, I see. Okay, so yeah. this is a geometric correction essentially. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Thanks. Um, Heather, you have a question? Yeah, I have a, a pretty general question, Jana, um, because this is something you've worked on for ages. I was wondering if looking at it now and looking ahead to the future, do you think that the future is simply moving towards um, machine learning, um, like the Calogan, or do you think there are other ways that we could think about doing fast simulation for the calorimeter that might be even better? Yeah, that's a difficult question. <laughs> um, I think we have to uh, uh, talk separately about electrons, photons, and jets. So what concerns E gamma, uh, what we can get with these parameterizations is almost spot on. It's almost perfect. And it's also better than the GAN. So uh, there is a pub note for fast color GAN that has plots with electrons and photons, and it's not as good as with the parameterization. So I don't see any reasons why we would go away from this approach. For the chats, the situation is more complicated. And it turns out that the fast, uh, the, the GAN, can handle these correlations better and, and more elegantly than the parameterized approach. So I, I think the future for the chats uh, is machine learning. Yeah. Thanks, Jana. It's, it's interesting to think about. All right, thanks. Anyone else with questions? Don't see any. Thanks again, Jana. That's really interesting and really a ton of work over time, but clearly on this, uh, that's move to the next talk then. Uh, Davide will tell us about uh, accelerating deep learning reconstruction for CMS. Okay. <laughs> okay, so hello everyone. So I'm Davide, um, I'm working on CMS experiment. 
And the purpose of my talk today is to bring you up uh, with some of um, my work with machine learning. Um, in the first part, I will describe the end-to-end -end, uh, deep learning approach for particle and event reconstruction. Um, the, then I will show um, some end-to-end -end benchmark on uh, different hardware um, architectures. After that, I will present the, the scaling um, of the end-to-end -end deep learning with the uh, multiple GPUs. And finally, um, I will present the implementation of the end-to-end -end, uh, deep learning with the CMS SW uh, software framework. To start with, um, I would like to consider that the most particle and uh, event reconstruction techniques, sorry, um, at CMS rely on, um, so, <laughs> so the, that most of the particle and event reconstruction uh, techniques at CMS rely on inputs provided by the particle flow algorithm. Um, which are used at the, to convert detector level information um, to physics objects. Um, despite the, the, the very high um, efficiency, uh, efficiency to reconstruct with the particle flow, some physics object uh, may fail to be reconstructed. For this reason, um, it's advantageous to consider um, the end-to-end -end approach that uh, allows um, a direct application of machine learning uh, to le low level data representation. And um, here we construct uh, composite images um, of, uh, from this low level uh, detector information where each sub detector is uh, projected uh, into into in, into a, 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 a channel image, a, 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 an image. So here at left, I have um, an example. So here I have um, um, one 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 sub detector, which is e CMS equal, which is projected on uh, as a, an image layer. Uh, at very left for the photon, uh, photon jet, and here for an electron. And here it's only showing one sub detector, so only the equal information. While at, at right here, I have um, a gluon jet image, and here I have uh, three, three, three channels. So I have the track PT information and also the um, ECAL and HCAL information. And um, um, here the resolution of, of, of the this uh, blue or here are um, basically the, the, the the equal uh, crystal, the barrel equal crystal size. So, <clears throat> um, our group developed uh, several end to end applications with the different purpose um, particle reconstruction, jet classification, or even uh, event uh, classification. And uh, in this presentation, I will show some results for uh, three uh, applications, end-to-end uh, -end applications, the electron photon and the quark loon uh, classifier and also the boosted top jet classifier. Uh, here at right, I'm showing um, a composite image uh, for uh, with eight channels. So here we have um, um, once again the track PT, but also the DZ, um, track DZ and D0, 
which are not shown here because it's superimposed with the traffic heat. Uh, also ECAL and HCAL, and also um, the, the, the heat from the, um, the, bar, the, the bar pixel layers. Um, as uh, I, I here is only used the, the, the run one data here, we have only three layers, but the, the current, <laughs> the, 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 the current state is with four, four layers. So uh, here, today I would just present result from um, um, CMS run one open data. Um, so this kind of image, are, this image is, is used as input uh, for the latest um, um, benchmark that I mentioned, the boosted top, um, the boosted top model. So, okay. Um, uh, okay, so I hear just a repetition of myself, but okay. Uh, so we developed three um, uh, benchmark, anti one benchmarks. The, and I will present them the results. So the electron photon, which use one channel, the ECO, um, the quark balloon using three channels, the traffic ECO and each call, and um, the, um, the top quark jet benchmark. And uh, as you just saw, the image use a lot of information, traffic E, DZ, DZ, and the pixel layers, each call and each call. Um, so, here I'm showing on this plot, in this graph, the, the train time uh, um, in blue, uh, the, 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 the CPU time, and uh, orange, uh, the GPU. And here we can see that the, 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 incre the increase of uh, computational time due to the, the increase of the complexity of the model, uh, but also how the training time could, uh, is improved uh, by, by switching CPU. Uh, okay, so now let's move to the study with um, 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 different various hardware architecture um, using a, the same end-to-end uh, -end benchmark. And for this case, I'll, I'll present only result with the boosted top quark benchmark, as it's the more complex, so it would be the most interesting to see. Um, uh, we make use of three architecture. So um, um, uh, Tesla P P100 and uh, a Tesla B100, which are GPUs, and also um, a Google TPU. Uh, and here in this table, I'm showing you the, 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 the main uh, feature characteristics of it, uh, of these three of these three systems. Um, and we access this system on uh, Fermilab LPC, the Google Cloud, uh, Cloud and uh, NVIDIA Rap Lab clusters. Um, so on this table, I, <clears throat> I'm showing the, 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 the data loading and also the training time for each of the architectures. And uh, in, in two configuration of image. So the first one is exactly what the image that they just showed you. It's we call resolution one, um, which means that uh, is the, 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 the equal resolution is just uh, the, the, the pixel, the minimum pixel image is the, the, the minimum pixel in that image is the, 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 the edge of the equal barrel crystal while while the x3 resolution is basically um, it's much finer it's it's a ninth of the previous one it's just dividing the the the, the, the edge of the the crystal uh, of the equal crystal by three um, so here we uh, from from this result, we conclude that um, so that uh, the V hundred has um, um, the best data loading uh, loading um, due the the, the, the 
that is the only system that make usage of uh, SSD storage. Um, and also we, we confirm that with profiling of scope as well. Uh, also, uh, we conclude that the Tesla P100 was slower than the other ones uh, for data loading, also for training, since it has uh, also fewer CPU nodes. And uh, okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a previous generation also of GPUs. And um, uh, the T, but the, the TPU has the, the, the uh, train four times faster than um, also conclude that faster than P100, and that uh, the, the, the Tesla P100 and the TPUs uh, provide a, a stronger data loading and training performance compared to the P100. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, comparing now only the, the GPU architecture, we observed that uh, the V100 uh, improvement come from um, different aspects. The one I just mentioned is the, um, the make use of the, the SS, SSD storage, uh, but also uh, it has more, more CPU core available, which and also the, 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 the newer GPU allowing mixed precision. Um, in this graph, I'm showing the data loading time in blue and also the training time in orange. Uh, the first two columns are, are, are the performance uh, with, um, with the Tesla P100 uh, system while the second is with, um, with um, Tesla V100, but using the same configuration. Um, the third one is, um, is still the, 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 the Tesla V100, but uh, after um, uh, uh, but changing the, the batch size, um, which here doesn't show that, in, well, it improves slightly the, 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 the the GPU performance, and then at last, uh, you can see using uh, um, the, these batch size of 64, and also after um, uh, setting the number of parallel reads to auto tune, we can see that um, we have a much better performance. Okay. We, moreover, we also developed um, uh, the end-to-end -end benchmark training with the end-to-end the benchmark with the multi-GPUs um, using Orobod uh, framework. Uh, with this uh, procedure, um, uh, different layers um, uh, of the deep learning model are training on different devices, uh, taking advantage of the inter-GPU and inter-node uh, communication uh, to, to finally, to, in order to distribute the, the deep learning uh, model parameters. Uh, between uh, various workers and uh, then aggregate them. Um, on this um, first table, I'm showing the performance of the, oh, once again, the end-to-end -end, uh, top quark um, uh, application using two GPUs, two, two Tesla V100 GPUs with uh, uh, different batch sizes. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, <coughs> and uh, the train time, as you can see, um, uh, is improved with the with the, with the small um, um, deterioration in the performance. Um, while in this second table, I'm showing um, another comparison, always using two Tesla. V hundred and 
uh, on the um, on the top quark um, um, application, uh, but uh, with different uh, uh, information linkage, uh, using only one channel, the track PT, or three channels, uh, the track PT, D0, DZ, and uh, finally using all of the A channels for um, as input. And uh, these results are in agreement also with the previ previous result that we had with uh, with, um, with using the TPU, Google TPU. Um, okay, I don't understand why it's going back to ten. Okay. Uh, okay. As regard the, the scaling multi GPU training, um, here in this plot, uh, um, I'm showing the, the improvement of the training time by scaling the end to end uh, top jet benchmark with um, um, on eight Tesla V100 GPUs. And uh, the, the, the result, uh, and this result with the um, with um, a speed up of uh, four times. Okay. Okay. Why is this going to? Okay, thirteen. Okay. So this uh, the, uh, to sum up, um, I, I we yeah I, I presented the the the, the end to end. Uh, deep learning um, application and um, uh, also the implementation on uh, on the CMS. Oh, oops, sorry, I missed something, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry, I, I, I missed a part, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why, but my my, my PDF is, is changing pages, but not according. <laughs> Um, so I forgot the, 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 to talk about the 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 end to end inference within um, uh, CMS uh, software. Sorry. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> um, so we developed three main packages here. Um, the, um, the data formats, the frame producer, and the taggers. And um, uh, this, uh, this package allows to, um, this three package allows to, um, the first one, so the data, uh, the time, sorry. <laughs> the data format package consists of, of all the objects and classes needed for running the, the, the end-to-end -end framework within uh, CMS SW. Um, the framework producer is primarily responsible for extracting detector data. And the, la the last one, the tagger, um, it was developed to have um, more detailed analysis on the um, reconstructed objects and, uh, and to cast the images of graphs. Um, Okay, then we um, benchmark the the the, the end to end inference within the, the CMS uh, software framework with the CPU and the single GPU using uh, the electron photon uh, and the, the quark gluon classifier, so one channel and three channels as input. And uh, the, summary, the result is summarized here in this plot, here the, the, the training um, inference with CPU in blue and uh, in GPU in orange. And um, uh, you can see that uh, and we, we achieved um, a, a factor two of speed up. Uh, the GPU uh, achieved up to uh, a, a factor two compared to CPUs. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, this brings me up to the, we have, uh, no, no, just don't, don't. Uh, so, yeah, so some conclusions, so, <laughs> finally, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> now the, the correct slide, so to sum up, I, yeah, we present some, um, uh, the, the, the end-to-end -end, uh, um, deep learning application, how this was implemented also with um, um, the CMS software framework, uh, and with 
the saw that the, 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 the running on, on GPU um, achieved the factor Q speed up compared to CPU within CMSW. Uh, also present some, in the comparison between uh, um, uh, different architecture and uh, how the, 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 the Tesla, uh, and the Tesla V100, the TPU show uh, uh, significant improvement in training and also in data loading. And also that the, the, the importance of scaling the deep learning, uh, which resulted in a speed up of five times. So yeah, now please bring me to the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Davide. Um, other questions? Uh, Kevin. Yes, I, I was wondering if you've quantified the physics performance of this approach, because without understanding that, the speed ups uh, are not very meaningful. So, so if you are, are producing some output quickly, but it's the wrong output, then it doesn't matter how quickly you produce it. Um, you know, it, it, we have to un understand that the neural network is actually reproducing the physics that we want. You can ah, see it I from see the ROC mean. curves. I mean, it, it's, is there an ROC curve in this presentation? Yeah, um, I don't know, a couple of slides before this. There, there are some area under the curve values. Um, Oh yeah, those. okay. We did. Yeah. We're not showing that, but yeah, you can. They're 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 basically the same. Yeah, okay. you see a little bit of a drop um, when you you can see a little bit depending on the batch size stuff, but you expect that. So, right, but but this isn't this doesn't tell the full story of, of the physics that's coming out of these. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure what you're asking because because um, here I, I'm asking you know, to see yeah. like a, a distribution of. You know what would be used in an analysis and, and how it looks in the traditional way and how it looks in the ML. Okay, well, this particular benchmark is focused on on you know on the classification for reconstruction. So so this is a different thing. There is an analysis benchmark for 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 a different end-to-end -end application. So that's that's a different story though. That, okay. Yep. Yeah, then this this benchmark is purely for uh, you know, quark gluon discrimination, top ID, which, you know, is self-contained. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking at the beginning, there was a discussion of uh, some other, uh, like, pre reproducing showers or things like that. Um, that's sort of what I was thinking of, but okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, I guess that th this, this is the part that's benchmarked, but not, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else with questions? Doesn't look like it. Thanks again, Davide. Uh, it's interesting. I think we're done today. So thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.